streaming. All right. Looks good. Figure out buttons. Please get down. I can't see. Oh, it's just L1? I can do that. Parker. How do I have all of these problems every time? Parker, <sighs> seriously. Alright, please don't break this time. Of course it doesn't save my data. Yeah, 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 yeah
Why does everything break when I use it? Hello. was only crashing because of my borderless full screen thing. I don't think the check the game had proper full screen. It's fine. It's mostly been technical difficulties up until this point. That is being presumptuous and assuming that there won't be more technical issues. If your game has bugs, I will find them. If it's on PC anyway, I always have the worst luck on PC. How do I do that? Oh, there we go. I played it on Vita, but I haven't. This is basically my first PlayStation on PC. Play session on PlayStation. I was planning to do a Let's Play, but I'll, I wanted to unlock Coco first, which is my favorite. She's got like this giant claw thing, which is really fun to use. I'm not sure how good this girl is. She just. I didn't use her in my Vita playthrough, so I figured I'd try her out. She seems cool though, with a decent range here. It's a fairly standard beat em up, except with some level up mechanics and skill tree stuff. Of which I have none. Like, I have, I'm have level 1, so I don't have any relevant skills. Quiet. Um, like. 
How does that sound? A fun thing about audio with my setup is that my speaker or my microphone is unusably loud at 100% volume, and Windows loves to disconnect it, and which resets it to 100% volume. So I constantly lose my voice for my audio settings. It should be louder now. Hopefully not completely deafening now. I think it might be disconnecting because the same reason my controller was disconnecting. I think I have too many high power USB devices in my shitty motherboard, which is quite expensive by the way. Cannot handle that many USB devices with drawing power. I got a USB PCE, PCE card that I need to put in, but uh, I haven't yet. <sighs> In case I was like completely silent while I was explaining it, this is like a just a standard beat em up with some RPG mechanics and a skill tree, different characters, stuff like that. It's pretty fun. I've played it before, but uh, it just recently came out on PC, so I need to rebuild all my stuff and unlock my favorite character. How dare you kick me? disconnected yet, which is a new record so far. I'm pretty sure it was my... Uh, I don't know. It hasn't crashed or disconnected the controller. I'm not sure if the disconnected controller is causing the crashes or what, but I suppose we'll see. This is why I wish more games had autosave and save like partial progress. I'm just a complete disaster magnet and end up losing lots of progress to that. Get out of here, Akumas. You're banned. This is tournament play, buddy. Plants. I've never actually eaten an eggplant. I assume they're terrible, but I haven't verified this fact personally yet. This is also apparently based on Phantom Breaker, which I know nothing about, aside from this game. These motorcycle guys are jerks. I'm not sure why so many beat-em-ups have motorcycle guys. Everyone always hates them. are wearing these like phantom masks I guess which makes them 
follows a phantom, who's apparently the bad guy, and we're gonna break him. I'm pretty sure that's how this works. There's also some obvious references here, like slight Akuma here. Very short Akuma. And also that little dude that was running around that's basically the little gnome thing from... what's it called? Uh, Golden Axe. Nixon masks. Ow. I keep forgetting to use it, but this is a game with- this is one of those two-plane games where you can jump between the planes. I'm not entirely a fan of their 3D effect they got going on, but uh... Honestly, it doesn't- it's not too bad, but... It results in inconsistent pixel sizes, which I'm not a huge fan of for pixel art games. Though it definitely looks better on PC than it does on Vita. On Vita, they did a... Pretty lazy job at getting all the pixel sizes right. I'm not actually sure it's any better on PC other than just being rendered at a higher resolution altogether, so it is less apparent. Like, the, the pixels end at weird edges. Several of the other characters unlock, like, have projectile attacks. I'm not sure if I need to unlock those for this one or if she doesn't get any. She has okay range to begin with. I don't really know any of this character's specials. Master Donut. Oh yeah, there's some fun stuff in the background. I uh, usually pay too much attention to it. Oh, these robots suck. Oh man, I was out of health? I didn't even notice that. I think I actually get to keep my experience if I die. I should have died when I quit before. Hi, Solaris. Spam X and down triangle. That might be different for this character, I don't really know her set. Um... Good. I appreciate the controller agnostic button prompts, but I kind of wish there was a setting to set which button prompts you get. I don't think there is. No, there isn't. This stuff's fairly bare bones, PC port stuff, but uh, it works and whatever. I guess I should play story mode because you can continue in story mode. I'm not good enough for. Arcade. <laughs> See, there are phantoms and they cause bad things. We're going to beat them up. That's the entire plot of this game.
Wait, what was- oh. Right. The story mode starts you off at the max level for the starting area, and then it takes it all away from you. It's one of those games. I may have beaten the game, but I don't entirely know the controls, honestly. There's a few, like, emergency mode and other stuff they don't really know how to trigger properly. There's some advanced techniques and crap. There's some fancy stuff you unlock, but I don't know how to use, which is... I should just look that up, I guess. This game kind of the op gives you kind of the opposite of had the feeling of leveling up and tearing through everything because immediately after ending this level, we're gonna go back to level one. But it is nice to level up and get attacks and stuff. The one good thing about this game is that it doesn't seem to have the same problem that many other like so. In beat-em-ups that have level progression, a common problem is that a certain level, just everything on any difficulty mode is a complete joke. I don't think this game has that, like, I got to level 30 and just normal wasn't even, like, super pathetically easy quite yet. I'm not sure if that changes eventually, but I kind of assume that at the higher difficulty level you're still gonna have some difficulty left, which is... not particularly the case in some, like, Scott Pilgrim, I really like that game, but the... Uh, if you raise your stats too much, everything's just way too easy. Also, I like that dash effect. I think that's missing in the Vita version. Wouldn't surprise me. To be quite honest, neither the Vita nor PC port are super amazing as far as ports go. The game itself is good though, so... whatever. And it's not like it's super pricey either, I think it's 12 bucks on Steam. The version is eventually coming to PS4, but um, between that announcement, both PC and PS Vita versions have come out, so it's not really sure what happened with that. It'll probably come eventually. Thanks for hosting, by the way. I'm not really sure what the whole deal is with hosting. I came back from a fairly long hiatus and suddenly there's hosting and stuff and I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So the game has up to jump, which I don't particularly like, but uh, 
It uses all of the face buttons and some of the triggers anyway, and I wouldn't want to jump on a trigger and like avoid it. But uh, I don't really jump that much, so it's not really a big deal. It's not as big as a deal as it would be with like a platformer. I hate platformers with up to jump. It's just wrong. Well, I don't have too many followers anyway, so... I need a little bit helps. Yeah, so this girl is evil, so we're gonna beat her up. That's the story. She's got a cute bunny eye patch. Spoiler alert, she's one of the unlockable characters, I'm pretty sure. The other one is Coco. Well, there's lots of unlockable characters. The one I care about is Coco. We'll probably see her soon, I guess. I'll we'll point her out when we see her. Flee! Flee! Okay. I'm pretty bad at not being juggled in this game. All I know how to do is use that mana using skill. That seems to not come away. There we go. I like her stance there, she's all wavy. <laughs> this is the part where they take your powers and toss you into Phantom Zone or whatever the crap. Yeah, the animations and sprites themselves are pretty good. I'm not sure what's up with that light in the center. It seems pretty unnecessary. I don't think they're particularly dark. Well, there's one kind of dark area, but it's not. It doesn't warrant a light. It seems fairly unnecessary. I swear the enemies are actually less aggressive too in easy mode, because they're not chasing after me like they usually feels like they do. One thing I don't appreciate in this is that the pickups disappear, and they disappear fairly quickly too. And since experience is actually a pickup, that can be very frustrating, because you gotta go rush and pick stuff up or else you're gonna lose your experience points. I was never a big fan of the whole disappearing pickups. I can excuse it for super old consoles where, you know, they just couldn't actually fit that crap in memory for very long. Well. But I don't really appreciate it included as a mechanic. Excuse me. Back here. If you hear galloping, that's Parker running around. They did a pretty good job with the sound effects and music, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Also, trash cans are full of experience and food. This is a very useful information to know in real life. Also, the run's kind of weird. You can stop it at any time by attacking yourself, but you... Get out of my way so I can show you. You run a set distance if you just double tap it. I guess it's so you don't have to hold it, but uh, it's kind of weird because stopping basically requires an attack, I think. But I mean, why would you not be attacking? So it's not really a huge deal either. Delicious eggplant! closets of the ele elevators here. There are just 10,000 people in there. Just for score, you don't actually buy anything in this game, you just use experience to get skills. Unfortunately, the other pickups seem to last longer than coins. I like this guy just running around with a cake as a weapon. Oh crap. Never forget to check the trash. Projectile cake, by the way. He has projectile cake. Which hurts for some reason. It's really bad cake. Chat experience. How loud is my controller, by the way? Like. 
Trash. Delicious trash. I must eat it all. Mm, trash. Love how someone leaves like a whole plate of sushi. Sushi. Sushi in the trash. Pretty sunset back there. Excuse me. So this is some like alternate universe version of one of the main characters. It's like a pretty sweet color scheme though. I think she's actually playable. Excuse me, get up so I can beat you up. Rude. My first playthrough I mostly used her, the maid sword girl, and the bullet maid. There's lots of maids in this game. I'm not particularly sure if that's like story relevant, but I just gotta notice that. Ah. Yeah, the girl with the bullet wand is, is I think was my main, and I also used this one a bit. I think I like the sword one, Makoto, here better than the spear girl. But, uh, whatever. Our real goal here is to unlock Coco. I we haven't seen her yet. We see her a couple times in the story. Excuse me, stop jumping planes. Also, I have no idea how blocks work, honestly. She'll be fine. She's a main character. She can take kicks from a size 20 boot any day. You mean... Oh, you don't drop experience at all. The depressed animation. Oh. Um. Wait, what? Crap. Not entirely sure what combo one does, but I know I want it. Always focus on getting the extra abilities because they're way more interesting than stats. I wish more games had like RPG mechanics that gave you more abilities as opposed to stats. Especially for like open world games and stuff. Because eventually the stats can kind of really screw up progression and stuff. But if you always gain new abilities, then you can keep the difficulty fairly constant while still giving a feeling of progression. I wish more games would do that. Plus, more abilities is just more interesting than just having, you know, bigger numbers. Disgaea is one of very few games where I'll take bigger numbers over more abilities. That's kind of Disgaea's thing. Oh, yeah, you can reallocate skills at any time. Well, not at any time, but like, once you're out of a level, you can redistribute skill points at will. I don't think there's actually enough skill points to fill in everything up. There might be, I guess there probably is if you buy the DLC. I think the DLC gives you 50 more levels, max, and an extra character or two. I think it, I forget if it's one or two. I don't know too much about the DLC, I didn't bother with that on Vita. 
This is a review copy. I'm not sure if it includes the DLC or not. I didn't really check. I haven't really given it a shake on PC yet until today. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. These guys with their bikes. At least they dropped some good experience. Delicious trash milk. Oh god. Oh, do not touch me. Please do not. Ugh. These guys. What are you doing, Parker? Parker's just zipping around the house like mad. Get away from me. Oh. Take your experience, though. This, for Thursday's stream, I'm probably going to stream, um, what's it called? Metal Princess of Arcadia's, that's another beat-em-up. It's more of a strategic beat-em-up, also with the RPG elements. I meant to record a video to post about it, but I forgot. I'm not sure how many people really, well, I am sure how many, that's not many, but not many people watch the announcement videos, but they do seem to matter slightly. Question mark? Phantoms! These guys have pretty cool sound effects, but they make them way too often, so it's kind of annoying. I'm not sure if devs just get used to hearing a sound effect so often they don't even realize it's annoying, or... I don't know. But sound effects should definitely be used in moderation and not, like, constant, every time you get hit sort of thing like this. If they made that noise, like, only when they died, it'd be pretty cool, but constantly making it less so. Also, some of the skills, skill things you call out can get kind of repetitive. There's one attack I spam a lot with Coco, so that'll probably get annoying when I play as her. I actually got one. Really bad at killing those. Excuse me, what are you doing? Die. That's one way to take care of him. Oh yeah, jump sound effects can be annoying too. Like, it's such a simple solution to that problem. You just, like, make a r small random chance to make that jump sound effect or whatever voice effect. And then it's way, way less annoying. Also, having at least two different voice clips can help a lot. Like, Skullgirls, I think, is always, is always a voice clip played when you do certain attacks, but there's at least two different clips, so it's a lot less annoying than it could be. And more games should just let you turn that off entirely. I, um... I've noticed a few games that do that recently. You can, like, turn off in-game voices, like... Honestly, for any game with rep repetitive voices mid-game, that should be an option. I just knows there's a crouching animation. I'm not sure that actually serves any purpose other than... Oh, there's crouching attacks. Alright. 
They don't seem to be of much use, but it's very cute. Yeah. 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 Also, that magic panic attack thing spawns tons of coins, which I don't particularly care about because that's score. I guess it's relevant for score runners. I wonder, does Twitch have any sort of like score run community? Like, I never see too many people running bullet hell games and stuff on Twitch. I'd like to see more of that. Like, cause I like running score games. I'm never usually like actually good enough to do the high score runs, but I guess it'll enjoy lots of shoot em ups. This girl, this is Goko. Just look at her, she's awesome. She's got the good skills too. So my real goal is just to unlock her. I hope I can unlock her on easy. I'd be very disappointed if I couldn't. Parker, what are you doing? even attack this lady. Ow, ow. Oh yeah, that's the attack that gets kind of annoying. It's actually really useful, but kind of annoying, as you can see. I'll try not to spam it too much once I get her, though. Not on camera, anyway. Here, I need to steal your character. I think it'll be a game where the tr open world is truly unlimited. Well, I think Minecraft is basically close enough because it takes like a ridiculous amount of time to actually reach the world borders and it's all random. But, uh, there's definitely potential for something like that. But I mean, programmatically, there's always going to be some issue where, you know, incredibly big numbers cause your engine to screw up. If it's all 64-bit code, you can get some pretty crazy big numbers, but there's always going to be some weird floating point arithmetic or something that screws up something. Pretty much any procedural game without limits ends up hitting those weird issues with the edges. Hi, Proto Man 13. Uh, this is the PC version. It's also on PS Vita and Xbox 360, and allegedly coming to PS4 too. But this is the Steam one. if they fixed the English in the Steam version. I almost hope they didn't. There's this one really hilarious line that Coco makes. That's a fair bit later, though. 
You know, all in all, I actually kind of like the pixel 3D look of some of the stuff, but it just, it's not really the sort of game that supports the 3D pixel look, because all the sprites and everything is on a 2D plane. And it causes some weird pixel scaling issues here and there. Uh, yeah, I haven't played the co-op yet. There were some people I was supposed to play it with on the Vita version on NeoGAF, but never ended up doing that. The PC's, um, whatever you want to call it, player base is probably the most active since it's the most recent release. But uh, I'm sure you could find someone, like, just arrange to play with someone, like, what I wish games would have, I need to do like a blog post on this or something, but like, I wish games had like a delayed matchmaking sort of thing, where it could be like, hey, I want to play this game online with people, but I, you know, the game isn't active enough to have players constantly, so I can't just sit around and matchmaking. So it just like adds you to a queue, and then when somebody else expresses the desire to play that game, it like tosses you a message like, hey, Here's a queue of people that are online currently and have expressed desire to play this game. And then you can, like, friend them or just play a game with them randomly or whatever. Because that's basically a problem that any small or moderately sized game with an online clone is going to have. Eventually your community is going to be really tiny. Because you don't have the staying power or the, you know, absolute player base even that the bigger crap has. And people tend to default, you know, the standards like Call of Duty, Halo, and all that stuff. Now, I would love to play more stuff like this online, but it's just such a hassle. Let's try and find people. I need to work on that blog so everyone here are my awesome opinions. That's definitely what blogging is all about. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim I really love with co-op, but I usually played that... Wait a minute. It's just pressing backwards? Pressing... I was blocking moves and I don't know how. I just not attack? No, it's just not attacking. Okay. Interesting. I've beaten this game, but I'm still not entirely familiar with the controls. It's got some decently complex moves. Well, not like moves, but like there's some systems that are pretty much optional. Like overdrive and stuff. I don't think I ever got enough skill points to actually use that. I never prioritized it either, but I never really bothered with it. Excuse me. There you go. Oh crap. I don't think I can realistically kill this thing in time. some damage to it at least. So the go sign kind of bugs me, because I can tell it's moving, like, animating at the wrong pixel size. Yeah, 
it's cool when like the sprite actually changes with an, when a tough enemy takes damage. Takes enough damage rather. Glad I managed to fix that controller disconnecting issue. I'm not entirely sure what was happening there. I think I think my USB ports are just not supplying enough power and I need to handle that. I just have every issue imaginable with PC games. Why are we back in the sewer? I'm far too dainty to be in the sewer. make noise when they die. Why can't the big ones be like that? The big phantom things are very, very noisy. I've recent like I think it might be a recoverable damage. Yellow is definitely full health. And if I if I go all the way to the end, even with red left, I die. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between red and yellow. I'm sure it's some sort of recoverable health system, but I'm not entirely sure how that works out. Now I'm focusing only on my health bar and I can't stop. I'm pretty sure if you get actual healing items, it does heal you over the red part. But I'll try to keep that in mind and watch. Ow! Frickin' pile driver me. Oh wow, you're big. King of Burger! I love that place. I think I'm gonna head off at the end of whatever the next boss is. Whatever the next end of the boss is, rather. Which I presume is the boss. Usually is. I'm not sure where they just catch fire when they die sometimes. Trash cans! Hey Coco. Hello giant dragon. boss this is. Okay, there you go. Hang on, ouch. I wasn't ready. Go away. Oh, crap. 
Good to not be on the same plane as this bag. It's not that. Didn't actually mean to break that quite yet. Can't see you, Mr. Dragon. Get out of that way, Mr. Dragon. You have a lot of HP, Mr. Dragon. I'm sure we can restart from just the boss battle immediately. Or defense and attack are good, I guess. Oh, hey, that's in the background. Um, what's that called? Bullet Soul Infinite Burst, that well, the thing on the far right. I want to say that left one is the Kiva's trip. I'm not sure what the middle one is. Why do you hurt so much? You didn't have to kill the dragon. Good. You know all that. <laughs> Don't gank me, troll. Goku's the best. I mean, look at that idle animation. quits for today. I'll probably do a proper let's play and I'll do a first look sort of deal. And I'll play as Coco for that one. Thanks for watching everybody. Anybody?